Waterfall editing techniques. In this video I'm going to show you how I tackle some of the waterfalls for my landscape photography. The previous videos, that if, if you've been following the channel, you'll notice I do a lot of creative edits and compositing. Uh, a big love of mine is landscape photography. A massive love of mine is landscape photography. I just love being outdoors and taking the photographs and taking in nature and everything that's there. And when I don't have the opportunity to do that, I create my composites or edit the images that you're going to see just now. So hopefully you follow along with this one and hopefully it'll give you some ideas on how to use Luminar to effectively get what you visualise your edit's going to be when you're taking the photograph. If I was taking this waterfall, for instance, and I saw the image as a black and white, my starting block when I come into Luminar would be to change the image to black and white. But for me, because of the type of day it was, I felt that the colour in this image suited the final edit. The waterfall is one of the main things here, and you'll notice that it was quite a dirty waterfall once you see the image. Uh, it's quite a dirty waterfall from the point of view that the rains are quite heavy and it's brought down all the muck and the sand and everything within it. So the water wasn't the cleanest looking. It had the yellow and yellow ochre tones coming through it and I wanted to clean that up. So I'll show you uh, within the edit how to remove that. The next video on Thursday is going to be this, which is back to the creative edits. So hopefully you'll tune into that. But without further ado, let's get into the waterfall edit. Okay, now that that's us in Luminar, what we're going to do is the main thing I'm looking for in this entire image is to take some of the colour away from here. The river, in this case, was quite strong due to recent rains, so it brings up some of the dirt from below, and I want to clean this up in the waterfall. So that's the main thing I'm going to be looking at in this. So, let's start off with... The exposure. I'm going to lift the exposure just ever so slightly, always watching the waterfall, but I'm watching what's going on round about as well. I'm going to push the smart contrast slightly. I'm also going to push the shadows just so that I can see what's going on round about and look down here the detail on the rocks. The next thing, AI enhance. So I'm going to lift that quite a bit, but still be subtle with it from the point of view that I don't want to blow out any highlights within this. Sky Enhancer doesn't work because it doesn't read that as a path of the sky. So that's fine for me for this image. Next thing is AI Structure. So I am going to lift that again. And with the AI Structure, that is bringing out more detail within the image. If I show you the before, the after, before and after. And what we're going to be doing with this image, we're going to use the AI structure and AI hands again, so that we can bring out more detail in the actual water itself. Next thing for me, colour. And with the colour, what I'm going to do is I am going to lift the luminance of the yellows, and you'll see what that's doing to the entire image. But I'm going to pull the saturation back slightly. I'm also going to get into the orange as well, and I'm going to pull the saturation down. So you can see there, very detrimental to the image. It's not the mood that I am after with this. And each time I'm editing, I'm trying to complement what was there without pushing it out of an unbelievable zone. Next, I'm going to get into the details enhancer. I'm going to play with the small details which will read the entire image, remembering that these sliders are global edits. So we can see already what that's done to the image. You can see the waterfall is popping and the entire image is popping. Medium details next. And again, not too much with this. So, so far I'm quite happy with this, but as I said already, this is the main thing. I want the colour, or not all of it, I want to lose some of the colour in here. And I'm going to do this with a straight edit within this, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. The next thing I'm going to do is add a new adjustment layer. Within this adjustment layer, I'm going to go straight into colour, 
and I'm going to go to convert to black and white. Now you see that that again is detrimental to the image and if I was to just use that as a mask it would still be too much for the image. It wouldn't be believable. But what I'm going to do with this is I am going to edit a mask and I'm just going to brush in the areas, take the size down of the brush. I'm using the square brackets and the keyboard to do it. And I'm going to take away the colour information in here. So that there for me, quite happy, round there. And I'll be quite liberal with this because of the video, just the time it will take. So I'm going to do the small areas first and then use a bigger brush to paint out the larger areas. So I'll go in there and I'll come down here as well. Remembering that I'm always thinking my next steps when editing these. And in this case, my next steps are to turn the opacity down of this layer so that some of the colour comes back. I don't want to remove it all, but I want to remove most of the colour from the debris and the sand and the dirt that's washing down over the waterfall. So I'm just going to check my mask. A couple of areas in here. And just round there. I've got a soft edge to my brush for this. So if it goes on to some of the rocks, it won't be too detrimental to the image. So I'll paint that in there. Looking in there, and I just click around there and in there. Now I can take my brush up big, and I'll just paint through this to there and there. Right. For the purposes of this video, I'll weave it at that. So I'm going to turn the mask off. So you can see already we've removed the entire color information from that waterfall. I may want to add some of it back. So what I'm going to do now is click done and then I'm going to get back into my adjustment layer itself and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that back just slightly just to bring some of it. If I go right back here you'll see the colour information beginning to come back. I'm going to go to around there. I'm quite happy with that for this. Next thing I'm going to do is I am going to go back in here and I am going to add some more AI Enhance and AI Accent. And again, being very careful what it's doing to the water, AI Structure. Because what I don't want to do is I don't want to blow out the water at all here by adding that. But I want some of the detail uh, for this image. If I show you the info in the image. 15 mil, 0.2 of a second. That's the info, that's how this image was captured. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go in and just check that everything is okay here as I look through it. Then I'm going to edit the mask. I don't want too much detail brought out in the grasses at the edges. So again, edit the mask, brush, and I am going to use the paint option and I'm going to paint and I'm going to be quite liberal with this though. So I'm going to paint in there, just bringing out some of the details that we have just added within that. And paint in there, take the brush size down, paint there, and all the way through this. Remember, there's many different ways of doing this, and I'm just showing you my preferred option when it comes to editing. So I'll check my mask. But in there, and I'm always using a soft brush for this, so that if it does go on to any of the rocks like that, it doesn't make an obvious effect on them. Your eyes will be led away from it and you won't see the edit, hopefully. So I'm quite happy with that. So, so far, we started with that for the beginning image. We now are sitting at this point here. Again, I'm quite happy, I quite like the way it's worked. I can see more detail if you look how the water is there and be using AI Enhancing AI Structure. We've brought out some more detail in that. 
but using the black and white we've managed to negate some of the colour that's in the actual water. Next thing, new adjustment layer and I'm going to build this entire image up via adjustment layers so now I'm going to get and play with the colour and it'll be masks and adjustment layers so now I'm going to get and play with the, the brightness and contrast of this so I'm going to turn the exposure down now because now I've got the water where it is I'm looking at these areas here and that's quite a nice compliment it's nearly back to where it is, but we st where we started, but we have a lot of detail now. Or more detail, not a lot of detail. We have more detail within the image that we can actually look at. So I may pull that back just a tad more. I'm not going to push the highlights because, again, I'm going to use a mask to deal with the water. If I do that, I'm going to check my original. Quite similar. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the mask. I'm going to use the brush, but this time I'm going to erase so the water's going to pop. If I paint in here, and as I say, just for the purposes of this video, I'll be quite liberal with it. And hopefully it doesn't pop too much for this. I'm going to do the small areas first. I find that actually easier when they're editing. If you're going to do the small areas first, you can then use the bigger brush just to cover the larger areas quickly. And there, just bring that down there, down there. As you can see, that might be a tad too much here. We'll see because I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with the sky. Take the brush up a bit, bring that down, and just cover as much of the image as you possibly can. Take a big brush and paint over. And that actually does, the way I'm describing I'm doing this, that actually does sound similar to Bob Ross. So there we have it, there we have the waterfall to where I am wanting. There's nothing blown out here. That may be just a tad too bright there. But again, it still leads us up through. So I'm going to leave it for this video. And I'm going to paint in there. I'm going to check my mask. Yep, quite happy with that. So now I'm going to deal with the sky and the surrounding areas. So again for me, I'm going to create a new layer here and I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. This time I am going to go into Dodge and Burn and I'm going to start painting because I'm just going to deal with the sky and I'm going to go in for Darken and I'm going to take the strength right down. I'm going to take it down to about 15. Take the brush size down but not too small and begin to paint in. I don't want this to be too moody but I also want you to be able to differentiate when you're looking at the image and see that there's a sky there and it's not just blown out. So there we have it for that, I'm quite happy. I could turn the strength up, paint again. But for me, I'm going to leave it at that. So I'm going to turn the start painting off. Just so that you can see where we're at. Now we're nearly finished. We're nearly at the end of this. I'm now going to complement the image by using the dodge and burn again. And this time I'm going to paint in the light areas. So I'm going to go start painting. I'm going to go lighten. The strength I'm going to take right down because this needs to be subtle. So the first time I do this, I'm going to have to check what I'm doing. And that is just about right. That's been a good choice for the first time with this. I'm not going to highlight this area here because that is already catching the sun. As you can see, what I'm doing with the dodging and burning, I'm just trying to bring depth into the image and where I think the light would penetrate and complement the image because we're leading the eye up through this image 
because of the way it's been photographed as well. We're leading the eye up through the image. So I'm trying to use the white and the dark, the white and the shade to also complement it as well. So I am now looking just to paint in the odd wee bit and complement the lead up through this. You'll get a nicer complement if you work with the white and shade that's already there and don't try and create light in it. So I'm going to paint like there. That actually might have been too much. Command Z, step that one back. I'm going to look for any areas down here in the rocks and because it's closer to us, strength wise, I'm going to turn that down even further just so that it doesn't pop too much. And there, down there. Take the brush size down and it is subtlety we're playing with we're not trying to create something that wasn't there or paint in light complement this area of rock there be some of these but we have to be careful with these because we don't want to pick out too many of these and our eyes run all over the image. We're trying to control the flow of your eyes through the image but also complement what's happening within it. Right there and you'll notice I haven't changed the strength now. I'm just looking for small areas to paint on. And I'm in there, there, there. So we started with, I'm quite done, we started with that, we now have this. Stronger, more vibrant image. The waterfall in the background may be too strong for this. We can always go back and dodge and burn that or we can actually remove a bit of the mask from this one. But I'm quite happy with that there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to get in and adjust some of these greens. I'm a lot happier with that image now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in and adjust some of these greens. Again, I'm going to do it on a brand new layer, a brand new adjustment layer, so that I've got the choice of just deleting the layer totally instead of going in and just double clicking. And I'll show you what I mean by this double clicking to remove any edits. Right, I'm going to go straight in and I'm going to get to colour and I'm only watching the greens throughout the image. I'm quite happy with everything else that's going on. So the greens will also be affected by the yellows. I'm going to pull the luminance back. Just about there. And the saturation I'm going to pull out of it. But you'll notice it has affected this. If I turn that off, you'll see it popping again. Turn it back on. I actually prefer it with the greens less saturated. And I'm, when I said about I could reset the layer or I could reset whatever my edits were, you click that there and that resets it. So I'm minus 37, minus 28 and I'm quite happy with that. If I click there, it resets it. So I have to go back into the green, pull the saturation back and I'm not watching the numbers now actually. Yep, quite happy with that. Luminance. To around there. So that for me has worked relatively quickly for this edit. So there's the before and the after and I'll show you it's split screen. So we started with this image here. We ended up with a stronger contrast air image now. Hopefully you get something from that and hopefully it lets you see that how by using adjustment layers you can quickly get to your end result. Lumina for any form of photographic editing is very intuitive and you notice with that my main reason for editing this image was to remove the colour information from the actual waterfall itself to take away all the mud and the dirty water that was coming down. And I quite quickly achieved that using the adjustment layers, in this case black and white, and then using a mask to just paint in the areas that I wanted it to affect. 
and then on top of that I could go back and dodge and burn my sky and enhance certain areas within the image. Now I could have spent more time in this and got it to exactly where I wanted it but for the purposes of the video and the length of time it takes to sit and watch one of these I thought it was best just to show you how to quickly achieve your image. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more please check out the channel below and if you're not currently a subscriber please consider subscribing. You'll see in Thursday's video it's going to go back to the creative edits so hopefully you'll tune in for that. Thanks again for watching.